Fulham have defied the odds and had a stellar campaign in the Premier League this season, but with Marco Silva attracting interest from the biggest teams in the league in this FIFA 23 alternate universe, Fulham have had to look to an old flame to keep up their recent momentum. Roy Hodgson has managed plenty of teams in English football, the likes of Crystal Palace, Watford, Blackburn Rovers, West Bromwich Albion and even Liverpool, but it's Fulham he became the biggest fan favourite with, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Atletico Madrid in the Europa League final several years ago. And today he's back to try and recreate the glory days and to try and cap off a storied career in football management by winning a trophy. Now looking through the squad it's actually not as bad as perhaps he first thought. Having said that he'll definitely need some upgrading in key areas. With only two players in the team with an 80 plus rating and not too many options off the bench the board have given Roy £31 million to spend to try and improve the squad. In typical Roy Hodgson fashion though the first thing the Wiley veteran's going to do is switch from Fulham's current 4-2-3-1 formation into a more defence focused 4-1-4-1 formation to try and tighten things up at the back and make sure the team is hard to beat. And with a massive clear out needed to try and raise some additional funds, the transfer window is well and truly open. However, Roy's first act of transfer business is to fend off an £18.8 million plus Dewsbury Hall offer from Leicester for Fulham's star player in Paulina. Fortunately enough, he does still have five years left on his deal, so Roy's in no hurry to sell. Tossin Adarabayoyo and Issa Diop are the only two first team level centre-backs at the club. And with them being young with plenty of potential, Roy is reluctant to bring in a star centre-back to stifle their development. With that in mind, he's decided to turn to 20-year-old Ecuadorian William Pancho from Royal Antwerp for £8.9 million. He's not an immediate starter, certainly one for the future though, but it's at a price that won't break the bank and the Ecuadorian is showing great potential and perhaps it is someone who can put a bit of pressure on Tosin and Issa Diop as the season progresses. After making the decision to send the on-loan Cedric back to his parent club Arsenal, it leaves the 76-rated Kenny Tete as the only recognised right-back at the club. Now with Roy Keane to try and balance the books with both youth and experience in the squad, he's decided to turn his attention to a man with not only plenty of experience, but plenty of Premier League experience. It's another man with an affiliation with Arsenal as the 28-year-old Hector Bellerin, eager to make a return back to the Premier League, joins the club from Sporting Lisbon for £9.8 million. Not only is it a decent fee for the Spaniard, but he'll come in and immediately improve the starting eleven. After rejecting a big bid for one of our star players, Roy is about to do the same for another. It's Mitrovic this time who's subject of Monaco's attention as they offer a player swap plus just £4 million for the powerful striker. It's an offer, however, that Roy has found pretty insulting and has moved quickly to reject it. Speaking of Mitrovic, as the club's best centre forward, it's imperative that we get some decent service into him. But with a 75 rated loney Dan James being the best right winger at the club, Roy is concerned that we aren't going to get the right service into the box that Mitrovic so desperately needs. So with that in mind, he's decided to go back into the transfer market and look to bring in the third signing of the window. And it's a player with World Cup and European pedigree who goes by the name of Herving Lozano, the 26 year old Mexican and joins the club for £24.4 million, a crucial player who play a crucial role in Fulham's survival this season. Now, William wasn't on the transfer list at the start of the season, but a £4.6 million offer for a declining 33-year-old whose contract is up at the summer was a deal that Roy Hodgson just could not refuse. William departs with both Roy and the board believing it to be an excellent deal too. Other departures include the likes of Tom Kearney to Toulouse for £3.3 million, backup goalkeeper Marek Rodek to Southampton for £7 million, and De cordova Reed to Aston Villa for five. And in spite of three big money transfers, those departures have left Roy with £11 million still to spend. But with a huge game away to Manchester United just round the corner, Roy doesn't believe he has enough time to scout and sign a new player and get them up to speed before kickoff. So with the team in decent shape, heading into the new season with a couple of our new signings heading straight into the starting eleven, and the board expecting another mid-table finish, the pressure is on Roy to pull out all the stops in his first season back at the club. However, an unfortunate 3-1 loss against United plus a late goal from Foden to give Manchester City a 3-2 win at Craven Cottage has left the club bottom of the table after just the first two games of the season. Granted, it is against tough opposition. It does, however, highlight the need for Roy to continue to strengthen the squad and really squeeze as much out of that £11 million as he possibly can. Now, Anthony Robinson is the weakest man in our starting 11, only rated at 76. And with Roy King to get some of the Fulham faithful back on his side, he's decided to turn his attention to a young man in Ryan Sessegnon, who once lit up Craven Cottage with goals and assists 
on the left-hand side of the pitch. However, after agreeing a deal to sign him, Sessegnon's wage demands proved too much and Roy ended up having to give up on the deal. Instead, he turned his attention to another Englishman in Tyreek Mitchell of Crystal Palace, someone who he's got a lot of experience coaching in the past, but this time he was priced out of a deal completely and wouldn't have even had enough cash to pay the young man's wages. And it's more bad news on the pitch this time as it's a third loss in a row. This one far more difficult to take, having been knocked out of the Carabao Cup in the second round, losing on penalties to Rotherham. However, with Roy thinking he'd have to gamble and wait until January to try and raise more funds to bring someone in, there was light at the end of the tunnel as Tim Ream ended up departing the club for 850k, meaning that on transfer deadline day, at the second time of asking, the former wonder boy Ryan Sessegnon returns to the club where it all started as he rejoins Fulham for £8.9 million. And so, with the whole budget spent, the starting lineup updated and the transfer window slammed shut, it's finally time to start Fulham's season with a huge game away at Anfield to Liverpool. But 20 minutes in and Roy's men are already behind. A lethal counter-attack from Fulham sees Mo Salah through on goal and when that happens, you know the outcome. A beautiful chip. 1-0 Liverpool. And with Milner doubling Liverpool's lead just eight minutes later after some pretty shocking defending by the new incoming Sessegnon, it must be said, the game was then completely done and dusted in the 74th minute as Mo Salah threw on goal again, unselfishly gave it across to his striking partner to make it 3-0 Liverpool. A consolation goal from Robinson in stoppage time was not enough and the club suffer yet another defeat. That loss leaves Fulham with five losses from their opening five games, not the start Roy would have wanted Four of those have come against four of the top teams in the Premier League, but with the team rock bottom of the table, something needs to change fast. Fast forward to midway through the season though and things aren't looking much better. 19th in the table, only four points off 17th, but miles off mid-table. The only slither of hope though is that new signing Lozano and star striker Mitrovic have combined brilliantly, scoring half of our total goals in the league so far. Clearly, Roy's decision to go defensive just isn't working, so he's made the bold decision to revert back to 4-2-3-1. It's a decision that goes against the for Roy, but desperate times call for desperate measures. He just wants to keep his job in his first season back at the club. And with 15th place West Ham up next, it's time to go and get some points. And after some beautiful build-up play, Harry Wilson gave us the only goal of what was an incredibly tight affair to give us a 1-0 win and a much-needed three points. Roy will be hoping that that'll be a shot in the arm for the rest of the season. And as we get to the end of the season, we've managed to beat the board objectives in the FA Cup, getting to the semi-final, losing to the eventual winners in Manchester United, but with just one game left in the Premier League, we sit just one point above the relegation zone. Roy certainly will not want relegation on his hands, and with an away game against Nottingham Forest to finish off the season, it's a must-win game to secure Premier League survival. And when we needed someone to step up, the most unlikeliest of heroes did with one of the most unlikely goals, as Tosin Adarabioyo, with a screamer from outside of the area to make it 1-0, and the three points and survival was sealed midway through the second half after more great build-up play was finished off with a delightful curling shot from Lozano. Roy celebrates at the end of the game. The team got the job done, he got the job done, and Fulham will be playing Premier League football next season. That win took us up to 15th place in the table in the end. Not exactly what Roy would have hoped, but he will hope that he can take that momentum into the second season at the club. However, with Mana Solomon's loan coming to an end and having just joined Spurs in real life, we'll need a left winger next season, but his 12 goals this season will be hard to replace. Plus, with a 76-rated Harrison Reed being our best backup central midfielder, we'll need some improvements there as well. Mitrovic finished off the season positively and ended our top goal scorer showing up front. We do actually have some decent players, but having conceded 63 goals this season, defence is another place Roy is going to have to invest in if we want to push on next year. Ultimately, it's been an up-and-down season for Roy. Big transfers, formation changes and last-minute Premier League survival, but he's confident next season he can bring Fulham to the very next level. As season two begins, Roy has been given 42. 2 million to try and make some big changes to this Fulham team, but with a real lacklustre bench and poor strength in depth across the entire squad, some serious work is going to have to be done and a major amount of departures are going to have to leave the club if we want to stretch this transfer budget. With 22-year-old Rodrigo Munoz returning from loan and starting to show that he has something special, that opens the door for former Tottenham loanee Vinicius Jr to leave the club for 7.5 million. And whilst he's probably our highest profile departure, the revolving door at the Fulham training ground is wide open with multiple more players leaving leaving the club as well for some modest fees. But with the transfer budget now up to 65 million, Roy's got his checkbook at the ready. The sad departure of Manor Solomon means a left winger is needed immediately to replace him. After leaving Everton in search of Champions League football at Newcastle, Anthony Gordon has really struggled to settle in on sign side and rumours are swirling around that he needs a new challenge if he's ever going to fulfil his potential. It seems like the time is right for Roy to strike 
and a £14.2 million deal sees him join the club and become our first signing of the window. With only three central midfielders at the club, one of whom whose contract is up in 11 months time and only rated 76, it seems like the next best place to improve. Leeds United were a massive relegation rival of ours last season and Roy's using that veteran experience of his to try and poach one of their players, convincing him to swap a relegation threatened team with one that are hopefully on the up under his stewardship. American Tyler Adams joins for £22.5 million. With Kenny Tete only having 11 months left on his contract and Roy decided to transfer list him, with Wolfsburg more than happy to take him off our hands for £8.7 million. And with the board plus Roy keen to fill the team with young talent, the plan is to look to replace him with a long-term option who can also adequately compete with Bella in this season. Joe Scally from Rangers is the chosen man to fill that role and £10.4 million later, he becomes signing number three. After conceding 63 goals last season, it's clear that defence is an area that we still need to continue to improve and with only three centre-backs at the club there is an obvious gap for a fourth. Now with all three of our centre-backs showing great potential Roy is really hesitant to splash out big money for an experienced centre-back who might just end up stunting their development. Plus with only £11 million left to spend the budget doesn't exactly give us many options either. So when scouting around for a solid ideally Premier League experienced centre-back who can slot in and cover when needed but also put some pressure on our current centre-back pairing and who fitted in with our budget Roy stumbled upon the perfect option as after finding himself on the fringes at Everton, Ben Godfrey was still keen to prove that he can be a valuable asset at Premier League level and at £7.9 million he became the fourth and final signing of the window for the club. Despite fighting relegation last season, the board have some big objectives to qualify for the Europa League this year and whilst only two of our new signings make the starting eleven immediately, the squad overall is looking stronger and Roy thinks there is reason to be positive heading into the new season and that we could well spring a surprise on some of the other teams. And after a Tremendous start to the season, winning three of our first four games in all competitions, including a 4-0 thumping of Watford in the Premier League. Roy Hodgson has secured Manager of the Month in August for the first time since February 2010. The big question is though, with the club now sitting in third place in the table, just for how long can we keep this impressive form up? And as we get to the midway point of the season, the answer is not for very long. We've slumped to 11th place in the table, but with us only being four points off of our sixth place rival Spurs, anything is possible in the remaining 17 games. And speaking of Spurs, after beating them in the League Cup quarter final, we've been drawn against our West London rivals Chelsea in the semis with our first opportunity of silverware looming this season and Roy's first piece of silverware since winning the Danish Super League in 2001. It's no surprise to see Mitrovic leading the way up front with 14 goals so far this season and Roy will be hoping he can continue that rich vein of form and help lead the team to domestic glory. And after doing just that, helping beat Chelsea 5-4 on penalties after a 4-4 result over the two legs, Fulham face Liverpool in the final. A momentous occasion for Roy as he finally gets the chance to avenge his only other cup final defeat with Fulham in the Europa League almost 15 years ago. And in the 93rd minute of the game, he thought he'd won it, but unbelievably the post came to Liverpool's rescue and both Roy and Fulham's hearts were broken just 15 minutes later as deep into extra time, Van Dijk of all people popped up with the winner for Liverpool as Fulham suffered a disappointing defeat in the cup final once again. And clearly that defeat was just too much for Roy and his team to bear as what followed was a series of poor performances and poor results. And despite achieving a 10th place finish in the Premier League, which in any normal season for Fulham would be a great achievement, plus coaching a striker in Mitrovic to 20 league goals in just one season, we all know how the FIFA gods work. And for whatever reason, it still isn't enough for the board as Roy Hodgson is relieved of his duties as Fulham manager. The second coming of Roy Hodgson at Fulham just wasn't meant to be and this time, in spite of reaching another final, only managed two seasons in charge. Will this be his last position in management on FIFA 23? Only time will tell. But for now, it's a goodbye to Roy Hodgson and a goodbye to all of you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.